Mount to the rescue, I hope. This is what is left of my twinkle red fantasy. Yes, it's been a long road. I'm going to try and intermittently put images into this video so that you see the history of the decline. Mainly, the decline for this twinkle was scale. Doesn't mean my other two twinkles didn't go downhill for other reasons. And those reasons, in my opinion, were my setup with Lekka and self-watering. I got the Lekka ratio completely wrong. All of them were potted up in a mixed bag of Lekka, large and small. I didn't take Lekka sizes into consideration back in the day. I think this was in 2019. And then there are some fussier twinkles and they didn't make it. However, my Red Fantasy was doing really well in the setup, never mind the Lekka ratio, until a massive scale infestation hit it. And since then, it's gone downhill and downhill and downhill because thank you to the scale, I got rot, the minute cuticle of the twinkle, the tiny, tight little growths all bunched up together. Well, it was just a hat trick of errors. So, considering that I know that my lecker ratio was wrong, I never removed anything away from the pot because I hadn't quite figured out what I want to do with my twinkle. As you know by now, we're going to mount her but the reason I left her in the pot was because of the humidity around the base that this setup provides. We have a new growth on this piece, which is clearly <laughs> detached. A new growth on this piece since the last time we saw it, also clearly detached. A lot of decay and rot and a very clear third piece that, yeah, it didn't make it. So <laughs> that is the long and short of this. I'm going to mount this twinkle. I don't want to mount twinkles here, but now that she is so small, I think my very dry climate is going to be okay. If she sticks around for maybe two more years, three more years, depending if she grows big and vigorous, we may have to readdress the mount issue. But for now, let's go with what we've got to work with. Let's hope it works to rescue her and we'll take it from there. And if you haven't liked the video yet, would you please take a moment to do so? And if you would like to follow the progress of my twinkle on a mount, progress, decline, don't know, whatever's gonna happen, consider subscribing. If you have not subscribed to the channel, I would really appreciate it and it really helps out with the channel, getting out to a bigger audience. Thank you so, so much in advance. Enough of the jibber jabber, let's get twinkle red fantasy out of that pot, clean her up and mount her. Shouldn't be too difficult, right? I could just pull. But because there are roots in the pot, they're all dead for sure. I want those roots for mounting. I'm still going to go along the procedure of just being diligent and pouring out the excess lecker and salvage dead roots. Everything that's gonna help me with humidity in her case around the base is gonna be super, super advantageous. So we didn't exactly fail on the root front. I mean, <laughs> so much for her just falling out of the pot. We'll give it a bit of a squeeze. There are some viable roots. Maybe that's a new root starting. I don't know. Everything's so small with her. We'll give it another go. Gently, because any mistake from here on in, we might as well say going, going, gone. This is the longest rescue mission I have had. Alrighty. So again, the root front wasn't that bad, but the lecker ratio was completely wrong. Note to self for the next time. This is what I have left. We don't need you. Um, yeah, nothing to write home about, considering how big she was. Alrighty, but she's scale-free, there's that. Let me rinse off the little bases here. It is a nice warm day today, nice and breezy. So whatever water I'm putting into all the crevices, it's going to dry out pretty quickly. Sorry, that was out of shot. You don't have a pseudobulb just yet. 
Pay attention to the camera, Nina. Get rid of that sheath. Piece numero uno is clean. Let's do piece numero deux and do that a little bit better than before. I'm gonna try this camera angle for this video and if it's getting too cumbersome to have it between me when it comes to mounting the orchid, then I will be able to change the angle. But for now, let's try it this way. It's really not that big of a mega project at all. It's just a bit fiddly. So we got rid of that. And another piece that is scale free. Whoop, there we go. I did not want to mount twinkles, but needs must. Clearly, I'm not going to be able to rescue these little pieces unless I put them into Akadama with grit and have it in a seedling cup, etc. Let's try them out. We've got a beautiful piece right here. See? And it's going to be a bit cumbersome. I'm going to change your angle. But look, what I did here, instead of drilling a hole straight through, I drilled a screw in the back, put a washer on it so it wouldn't slip through, and then put my white coated PVC wire on the back making it look a little bit more presentable. Something along those lines. And I glued a little bit of hob filter material onto the mount. That is my sphagnum substitute. What I'm trying to do is get the pieces up here so that the base can hold the water. That is the thinking behind this, but we shall see. I've already put my fishing line in the back. I have a slip knot right here. And at the end of the video, if you want to know how to make a slip knot, because it's so difficult to see with fishing line, I've got a clip with green colored horticultural thread. And I'll add that clip in the back to show you how to make a slip knot so that you are able to copy that if you're not entirely sure how to do it. And maybe that will be useful for you in future. So I'm going to change the camera angle. Let's get to mounting. I really did want to go in with the screws and everything on here, but I have to say that with the two little pieces, that would look all a little bit clumsy and bulky. I'm not even gonna try it. We're just gonna go the conventional way with the fishing line. Just make sure I stay down here with you in the camera while I'm doing this. So I'm gonna put one piece there, giving me the option of this rhizome, this gap, to secure it with the fishing line. Make sure I've got my fishing line ready to go. Make sure I've got my end point, the end bit also ready to go. And a slip knot is a slip knot because when you pull on it, it just keeps shifting, so stop pulling. But anyway, now you know, I'm trying to make sure that once I start to wrapping the fishing line around, I know where all my bits and pieces are. Here is number two. I'm going to use that part of the rhizome right there as my go-to with the gap right there. So now let's grab the roots and make them work in our favor and get the first little loop around <laughs> and secure at least part of the orchid. First loop, success, and we shall repeat one more time. If I let go of my thumb, now she's pretty secure, but I'm still gonna hold on to her because we haven't tied her off yet. And then I wanna go in a little bit of a cross angle just for this one piece. Come back around and see if I can get a cross angle over here 
with the second piece going up and back behind the leaves and not tangling my wire in the back with a fishing line. There we go. Now we're going to come down this way to secure this piece crosswise at a diagonal. Don't want to go down to the lower part of the mount if I can avoid it. And that's looking good. I do have to go down. So we're going to come back now the other side making sure that the, my back piece does not get caught up with everything else while I'm wrapping the fishing line around because I need that to tie the orchid off afterwards. I don't want to lose sight of that because once we're done, which we are, according to my perception, I just hold on tightly and see. If I tie her off now, she's good to go. Now, the only thing in this instance is to make sure that I don't flatten my orchid up by putting the mount facing me and the orchid the opposite end. <laughs> because, yeah, that is going to be a bad idea. So I'm going to tie my fishing line off pretty generously because I don't want to get caught out with very, very little line to work with. And then we're gonna use, I hope that this is in shot. We're gonna use where we started wrapping around, go in there, and that is our tension point to which we can now do a reef knot and tie the two ends together thus securing the orchid. Moving my thumb very, very quickly so that I don't lose my tension point. Another reef knot just to be on the safe side. And because I get jinxed quite a bit, three times a charm. Come sa. Now, my tag. Question is, will it fit on the wire? And will it look the part? Or will it make everything look a little bit silly and out of place? It looks the part. <laughs> Good stuff. I very, very quickly put my fishing line back in its little catch right here because <laughs> if this thing unravels, I'm going to go mad just trying to put it all together again. There she is. Now, when it comes to space in the winter, because everything is hunky-dory during the summer, of course, now I have another mount that I have to find space for in the winter in the hanging space, but luckily this mount is super duper light. So she's going to be okay. She has her designated space, even though, yeah, it's unfortunate that she is now on a mount. But here we are. We have removed the Brassavola flagellaris from the space. That Brassavola mount is going onto a shelf because it's that big and that heavy. So this little one, this little lightweight it's gonna be just fine, seeing as it's not that heavy. And you just saw I missed it, the bottom part. I don't have to go up, up and around, just the bottom. My full sphagnum moss is going to do the trick for me. The only thing left to do is try and test where I want to hang her now during the summer, because you know, I gotta keep an eye on her and I've gotta make sure she stays scale free. So I'm gonna go to the blooming alley, find a position, and then we can make the hook. So what I've got going up here is my Victoria Regina to the left and my Dendrobium polyanthum to the right. You can see there's a gap in the white grating. Yes, while that makes a lot of sense, we may go there, we may not. But a little bit lower, I have another level right here. And in that gap, I think she would fit very, very well. She will get residual spray from the other ones that I'm spraying up above. There's plenty, plenty of breeze for her to then dry out. And if she doesn't get residual spray or enough of it, then I can always, always add a little bit more 
to the base there on the hub filter material. So now that she's where I would like her to be, at the height that I would like her to be, we're gonna make the hook. That looks about right. Unfortunately, I went a little bit overboard with the white wire, which is a shame because I don't like to waste material, but maybe we can find a purpose for this somewhere down the road as a steak. Steak as in pot, not steak as in nom nom nom. <laughs> and there she is. And that is my little Oncidium Twinkle on a mount. Let's see if she will continue to grow, chuck out roots. Like I said, it would be awesome if you would follow the journey. We've gotten her to this point. I mean, the only thing that can get worse is that I have a free mount. <laughs> but I don't want to jinx her just yet. So I want to thank you for watching. But remember, I'm adding the clip of how to make a slip knot right at the end. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, though. Please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.